Our scripture reading this morning comes from Luke, chapter 14, verses 25 to 33. Large crowds were crowding with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and his children, his brothers and sisters, in, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still at a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything, he cannot be my disciple. This then is the holy reading of God's word. So in our scripture for today, we find Jesus speaking to a large crowd um, that has begun to follow him. And it was common for many people to follow Jesus from place to place, and, he would, and they would wait for him to speak to them. And when I think about this, I get an image in my head uh, from the movie Forrest Gump. You might remember at one point, Forrest is running across the country, and as he continues to run, people begin to take notice of him. And then they start to run with him, following him across the country as he's running. And finally, after years, in the middle of the desert, he stops and turns around and looks at them. And a hush falls over them because they're waiting for him to speak to them. And he just looks at them and says, I'm kind of tired. I think I'll go home now. Now, one of the guys that has been following him for the longest simply looks at him and says, that's it? That is the message you have for us? You're tired and you're just going to go home. You see, he had been following for those years that he was running. He was expecting some sort of profound lesson to come from Forrest. But instead, he simply tells him what he is thinking. I'm tired of running. Could you imagine the disappointment that you would feel if you had devoted so much of your life to someone or something and it turned out that it wasn't worth it? Now, when Jesus is walking and the crowds are following him and he stops to turn and talk to him this time, um, he tells them that they have to be willing to change their lives if they want to follow him. See, they have to be willing to give up everything if they want to be his disciple. And I can imagine that some of the people that were following him felt the same way that those people following Forrest Gump did when they heard that message. Now, don't get confused. What Christ is saying is obviously much more profound than what Forrest Gump had to say. But all the same, it wasn't what people wanted to hear. When we hear the message that Christ gives the people in this scripture today, we are often confused by his words. We especially become confused by the first part of the scripture where Jesus tells us that if we are going to follow him, we will have to hate our mothers our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our wives, our husbands, our children, and even ourselves. Isn't Jesus the peacemaker? Isn't Jesus, isn't Jesus the one who preached to love our neighbors? Isn't Jesus the one that tells us the greatest gift we can give is to lay down our lives for others? And what about the fifth commandment that tells us to honor our fathers and our mothers? How can it possibly be that he is telling us to hate others? 
When we read this scripture, we often read it in a literal sense. Okay, he told me I have to hate others in order to follow him. And so now that is what I need to do. And indeed, there are groups of Christians that have read this scripture and taken it to mean I have to isolate myself from all others in order to follow Jesus. But it is important for us to understand that Jesus is not literally telling us to hate others. You see, when Jesus spoke, he often spoke in hyperbole. And what that means is to speak in an exaggerated terms in order to make a point. And we can see that he does this in other areas as well. Uh, if we look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 29 and 30 in the scripture, Jesus tells us, or tells the people, that if their eye causes them to sin, they should pluck it out. If their hand causes them to sin, they should cut it off. That it is better to go through life maimed than to be marred by sin for eternity. Again, Jesus is not really telling people to hurt themselves. He's trying to make a point, and that point is that we must take sin seriously. And in our scripture for today, he's not telling us that we have to hate our family or ourselves. He is telling us that if we are going to follow him, that we must be willing to put him first. That we need to put our commitment to Jesus before all others, including ourselves. Jesus goes on to warn the people that they have to take stock in the difficulty that they will face if they choose to follow him. He relates the metaphor of building a tower and going to war. Does not a person make sure they have enough money to complete a tower before they build it? Does not a king make sure his forces are strong enough before going to war? Well, you need to make sure that you want this. Before you follow me, is what he is saying. Why does he choose those two examples to give to the crowd? Well, do you suppose there were builders in the crowd that were following him? Do you suppose that there were soldiers that were following him? You see, Jesus was always very good at putting things in terms that people of his time would understand. To us, he might say, does not a farmer make sure he has seeds before he plows his field? Does not a teacher make sure they have pupils before buying supplies? You see, he wants to make sure that we know what we are getting into if we choose to follow him. And what he is trying to tell us and make us think about is this. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Is it worth the tribulations, the trials that we will face if we choose to follow him? Is it worth us putting aside all other things in our lives in order to follow him? Now, if you have to choose between freshly squeezed orange juice and orange juice that comes from a can of frozen concentrate, which one would you choose? Well, chances are, if you are not the one who has to put in the effort, of gathering the oranges, cutting them, and squeezing them, then you'll choose the freshly squeezed juice. But what happens when you are the one that has to put in all that work to get that juice? Are you willing to put in the effort for the good juice? Or do you simply say, you know what, concentrated juice is good enough. I know it's not the best, and I know it doesn't contain the same amount of nutrition or vitamins, but it is kind of orange. And it does taste close enough to the real thing to make me feel like I'm having orange juice today. You see, the truth is we often settle for close enough if the better option requires us to put in a lot of effort. We will say to ourselves, you know what, that juice is, is not worth the squeeze. But when it comes to our relationship with Christ, I promise you that the juice is worth the squeeze. See, there is nothing in this world that can compare to the love of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we are given the chance at a life free from sin. We are given the chance at a life that is eternal. And we are given the chance to have the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings walk beside us. All we have to do is be willing to follow him in the way that he has asked us to follow him. 
Now, Jesus, in his eternal wisdom, also knows that we will fail, kind of like we talked about with the kids today, trying and failing. He knows that we are human and we will stray from the path, and he knows that there will be times when we fail to put him first. But he still provides a path for us to come back to him. It's kind of like this. Say again, you were going to make that orange juice. You were getting those oranges and you cut them up. You squeeze them and you're ready to enjoy the fruit of your labors. But somewhere along the way, you accidentally picked up lemons instead of oranges. You see, you followed the wrong path. You blindly picked the wrong fruit. And now you're left with a sour taste in your mouth because of your errors. Life can be like that for us sometimes. See, we fail to follow Jesus, we fail to put him first, and we allow ourselves to stray from the path. And we end up finding that what we were going for was not worth the effort. But the good news is there is always hope because of him. And he wants to put us back on that right path. And he wants us to help to be reminded to put him first. You see, Jesus provided us the path to repentance he taught us that we are to strive for perfection in our Christian lives. But when we do fail, we are to confess our sins and turn away from them so that we can move back to that path that he wants us to be on. We are not like those people that were following Forrest Gump in the desert. We are not going to be disappointed by what we gain from our experience following Christ. Jesus didn't simply say, I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home now. No, he said, I love you. I want you to follow me. I want you to know that the path is not always going to be easy. But if you choose to be my disciple, you will be faced with times where you will have to choose between me and the world. And I need you to choose me. And if you're willing to do so, your reward is great. I will go and prepare a place for you in my father's house, and you will be there with me for eternity. See, I promise you that the juice is indeed worth the squeeze when it comes to your relationship with Christ. Now, if you need to recommit yourself to Jesus, I invite you to do so today. It is a simple process. You just need to confess your sins to him and then turn away from them. And if you haven't chosen to follow Christ, I invite you to do so today as well. I invite you to come forward today and proclaim him as your Savior, knowing that he has promised that through the path there will be difficulty, but you will never face it alone. My challenge for you this week is this. What is one area in your life that you need to put behind you so that you can follow Christ? And whatever it is, leave it today and follow him. Amen.